Welcome back to Catholic Drive Time. This is your host, Adrian Fonseca. Praise be to God. It's good to be on with you today. It's always good to be here with you, but it's especially good to be with you here today because we're back. I've been gone for a few days, and it's been... It was nice to be away. It was nice to be on vacation, a very peaceful vacation. Went to a conference. My brother went with me. It was pretty exciting to travel with my brother. And we, it was very peaceful. I was away from technology mostly, hardly any internet. It was a great time, but I really did miss you. I really did miss you. And the good news is I won't have to miss you for a long time because uh, starting in just 18 days, two weeks and change. We got, we got two weeks and then we got a little bit of change. And there's going to be a brand new show launching, Morning Joy, that'll be launching January 22nd. And I'll be here with you. So I'll be leading you along the way. I'll be holding your hand, walking you through our brand new segments. We're going to have Dave Palmer, Cecil Anderson. I, rumor is there's going to be a couple uh, of bishops that maybe you have heard their names before. And maybe we'll reveal to them to you who they will be coming up in over the course of time. There's going to be a lot of things that are coming on. And one of our regular guests, man, no, I was I was worried. I was sad. I was thinking, okay, well, my favorite Canadian, my favorite Canadian, Alan Smith, will he join us on this new endeavor? And Alan Smith said yes. So Bishop Sheen today will be with us continuing after January 22nd. Good morning to you, Alan. Uh, good morning, Adrian. It is great to be here, and uh, thank you for including me uh, in the new program uh, coming up. It's um, everyone needs Bishop Sheen. You know, I think this is what um, I've been blessed to offer for the last ten years: is just sharing the wit and the wisdom of the Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen on radio, uh, on the internet. Uh, again, um, he is a prophet of our times. <laughs> You know, the, the things he wrote back in the 1940s and 50s and 60s, um, it's relevant today. And I think this is why we have to crack open some of his 66 books to uh, glean from the pages, uh, just uh, an instruction manual for today. And so it's great to be, uh, again, on the team, uh, sharing the good bishop, bishop's wisdom and, uh, you know, giving a few reports from the mission field where I get to visit parishes and give reflections. So uh, great to stay in my lane and share Bishop Sheen. <laughs> so thank you again. <laughs> well, Alan, I am excited because, I mean, with a name like Morning Joy, what else could you have but Fulton Sheen and his life? I mean, <sighs> A life that could not be considered joyful. I mean, he, he has such joy in his face, in his visage, when he's giving his his talks, his radio programs, his TV programs. And, of course, the famous phrase that life is worth living. And I think that's something that is always a good thing to keep in mind. And, and just so people know, Fulton Sheen's also not the bishop we're talking about as a regular guest it is in fact a real bishop that is alive not dead but uh well i mean fulton sheen's alive he's alive in in christ but uh, walking this earth is what we mean right alan right yeah and you know speaking of slogans you mentioned your life is worth living which is so true but uh one thing that really is important is that we remember his quote unless souls are saved nothing is saved and I think people who have made New Year's resolutions are all coming to the same um, reality, this epiphany, to say, yeah, it's about saving souls. I got to really work on my soul, not my 501c3, not my um, you know retirement plan, but my soul. And so I think that's what Fulton Sheen brings clarity. Unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. And so, uh, again, let's get to that. Let's get to the business of saving souls. And I tell you, Fulton Sheen wrote a classic book in 1958 called Life of Christ because he wanted everyone to come to Christ, to understand Christ. And in that beautiful book, many people have that book, Life of Christ, he wrote in 1958 in a very uh, dark time in his life. 
He was uh, being canceled uh, from television. He was embroiled in a battle with Cardinal Spellman and some other clerics. Uh, and so, of course, think about that. You have this Emmy Award winning television show, 30 million people watching each week, and then it's taken away from you. And in those uh, dark years, he wrote Life of Christ. He went to the scriptures and put together a beautiful book, which really unpacks the life of Christ. He takes the scriptures and he uh, reveals to us the deep meaning of each scripture passage. So uh, again, you asked me to talk about what Fulton Sheen wrote about the epiphany. Well, it's in the book, Life of Christ. And so we'll share a little bit this morning. Amen. Amen. And that's couldn't ask for a better transition into talking about the epiphany, because in just two days, we're have celebrating the epiphany, a day that is one of the highest feasts in the year. And yet nobody people forget it. People will just kind of blaze over it. It's Christmas is over. Christmas season's over. Take down the tree. Take away all the gifts. Everything's over. But yet it is one of the biggest feasts of the year. So, Alan, tell me about the Epiphany. What was Fulton Sheen's meditation on the Epiphany? Well, I think he uses a catchphrase that's so important. And that catchphrase is, divinity is always where one least expects to find it. Uh, no one really expected to find our Savior in a, a manger in Bethlehem. No one ever would think that's the way God would come into the world. They all expected him to be born in the inn, uh, but he was born in the peripheries, in the stable. Uh, but again, that quote, divinity is always where one least expects it. And I think as we travel through this world, that's where we sometimes get a little gobsmacked. We have those spiritual encounters when we least expect it. Uh, but again, look, search. And I think this is what, um, again, history talks about, how um, the scriptures prophesy that the Messiah was to come. People were looking. And uh, so again, this is why the wise men from the East uh, were looking. Uh, they knew of the prophecies, and they came in search of the, the king, and of course found the king uh, in the manger. So uh, I think this is why it's so important that we keep up our Christmas crash, our, uh, we don't package everything up on December 26th, uh, that we linger and enjoy the full season of Christmas. But uh, it's that opinion of finding Jesus, and sometimes we'll find Jesus when we least expect it. Amen. Amen. And I, I think that's something that we can linger on just a second, finding Jesus in the places that we least expect him. Because, I mean, like you mentioned you don't expect the king of the universe to be in a small, humble major. You would expect him to be in a grand palace, in a glorious kingdom with servants surrounding, gold lining the floors, his crib maybe in, in, embezzled with beautiful gems. And yet our Lord comes so humbly. And I think one of the things that Epiphany reminds us of is the disposition of the three kings. The three kings who, they probably were scandalized by the idea that the king would be born in a manger. I mean, obviously they were because they went to go see Herod first. They thought, oh yeah, he's going to be in Herod's palace, not in a cave somewhere. So tell me about the three kings, Alan. What was Fulton Sheen's understanding and thoughts about the three kings? Well, I think what... Um we center in on a lot is the gifts that he that they brought uh, and the symbolism of the gifts. And, and I think we challenged uh, our listeners uh, when we were doing our Christmas shows to challenge them to bring a gift to Jesus. Um, you know, what are you going to give Jesus at Christmas? And will you give him some time in prayer? Will you uh, make amends to visit a stranger? Um, all of these little things that we could give Jesus for Christmas, and now we have to do the accounting. What did we give him? But in the case of the three kings, again, they gave the Lord gifts. And uh, Fulton Sheen mentions that. He says in Life of Christ, The Magi brought three gifts, 
gold to honor his kingship, frankincense to honor his divinity, and myrrh to honor his humanity, which was destined for death. Myrrh was used at his burial. The crib and the cross are related again, for there is myrrh at both. And I think when we just think of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, uh, there is this um, pre-announcement of his death. Um, our Lord came into this world to die for our sins. And so, uh, again, I think it's a gentle reminder at the Epiphany that we have a duty to give God our gifts, our time, our talent, and our treasures. You know, it's funny you say that, Mint, focusing in on the on the myrrh there, because we, I think, I'm trying to remember where Fulton Sheen said this, but he always mentioned that that the joy of Christ was always tinged with the shadow of the cross. That the shadow of the cross loomed over the joy. Well, you think about the joyful mysteries and all the joys that happened there. And then you recognize that the cross was looming over. And it's not as if our Lord and our Lady were unaware of it. They were very keenly aware of the cross, that that was where he was headed, that he was born to die. Where other men were born to live, he was born to die. Uh, tell me about this element of the looming shadow of the cross. Yeah, I think people sometimes um, can't connect the dots. Uh, they want to compartmentalize um, the two um, great moments of history. But they are so connected. They are so connected. And yet, I think when we look at the life of Christ, um, and we look at what the church offers liturgically. Yes, we have this beautiful intimacy with Christ at Christmas. We all love the Christmas uh, manger scene and bring our families together. But then immediately the next day, we celebrate the Feast of St. Stephen. And then the following day, the uh, Feast of the Holy Innocents and the slaughter of the babes. Um, and so you can see there's this transition from just uh, peace on earth, goodwill towards men, and then the slaughter, the blood, the cross. And I think this is what the church is preparing us for, uh, to say, yeah, you will have your Good Friday, and you need your Good Friday to enjoy your Easter Sunday. Mm. And think about it, in six weeks, we'll be celebrating the feast, um, those that we'll be celebrating the feast, but we'll be beginning the season of Lent. And so uh, prepare. We need to prepare. As we prepare for Christmas, we almost have to start preparing now for Lent. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, the church teaches us Christmas, St. Stephen, the Feast of the Holy Innocents. Um, there's a message there. There really is. Right. 100%. I completely agree, Alan. And I think that's something that we have to keep in mind, especially leading into Epiphany. Let's celebrate, especially keep the, the Christmas season flowing. But remember that... Ash Wednesday is just around the corner. That Lent is just around the corner. We cannot feast if we do not fast. And we cannot fast if we don't have some feast. So let's take the proper look at the holidays. And let's actually celebrate them, these holy days, with solemnity. Alan, where can people keep up to date? And where can people find more information about where you're getting this information from? Right. Um, our humble website is bishopsheentoday.com, and it's simply, we need Bishop Sheen today. So uh, visit us at Bishop Sheen today. Uh, there you'll find hundreds of Fulton Sheen's videos from YouTube, uh, of course, his many presentations, many audio recordings we've downloaded and archived. And of course, uh, his 66 books are there and with uh, links of where to purchase those books. And I encourage everyone to pick up a copy of Life of Christ. It's a classic that everyone should have in their own personal library, uh, Life of Christ. But again, visit us at bishopsheentoday.com. Yes, bishopsheentoday.com. And here's a pro tip for you. If you go to Bishop Sheen Today and under read, he has some of the books that are in the public domain that you can read for free right there on the website. So go there, bishopsheentoday.com. God bless you, Alan. God love you. And see you, well, I'll see you next week, but see you in Morning Joy on the 22nd or after the 22nd. God bless you, Alan. God love you. God love you. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, our Fear and Trembling game show. Call now, 877-757-9424. We'll be right back.